what I'd like to do is go back and look at some of the things that were so great this past spring. Things like lettuce, the Granada oak leaf lettuce is fabulous. And it did so beautifully in the color where well, you can't beat it. And then there's that little Tom Thumb bib lettuce is so delicious. We had a bumper crop of gorgeous cabbage as well as kohlrabi. And the strawberries, well, I can't imagine them being any sweeter than they were this year. Now take a look at this shard. This is one of those vegetables that can take some heat, so they're coming on beautifully. This is one of those plants that I love to eat, but I also love to look at it. So it's a feast for the eyes as well as one for the taste buds. I like to grow it in rows like this because I can harvest these gorgeous leaves for the kitchen, but I've also grown it in containers. It can make an outstanding container plant, a focal point in a bed, or just sitting by itself among flowers. Just take a look at the color of these stalks. It's really gorgeous, isn't it? Now, what I did here is I planted these in pots. These were actually peat pots, which are biodegradable. So the little plants were already started when I planted them. You can actually see evidence of those containers as you look at the base of the shard here. Now, I wanna talk just a moment about some flowers that were great performers this spring. Gosh, the delphiniums have been fantastic. Its close cousin, the larkspur, this one called Imperial Giant, wasn't far behind it. Just spectacular. And of course, there was the little Laguna Sky Blue Lobelia, as well as Bluebird Nemesia. I love those blue colors, particularly in the spring. And of course, the tulip display, well, it was stunning, both on the cool and warm side of the borders. You know, there's so many correlations between building a house and building a garden. Take a garden, for instance. You have to have the framework and the structure. Behind me, you can see the stone walls that created the terraces, and then pieces of hedge that, well, they really serve as a canvas to paint against. And then you have the pattern of beds and these espaliered trees that frame the walls. And then you come into the planting of color. Lots of color here, largely blues and purples, but we've accented it with some chartreuse in the way of this coleus and these beautiful zinnias. If you look at the house, we started out with a red brick house. Well, we changed the color to the butter yellow lime wash, the red roof, the columns were placed on the front, which really helped reproportion the whole house. And then finally, the shutters have gone up. And what a beautiful accent they add to the house. So you can see each of these elements play a role in completing the picture. Now those shutters, I was a stickler for wanting something that was very authentic. We're trying to create a house that reflects American Greek Revival style. So I wanted shutters that really work. And that's what we have. We have bifold shutters on the kitchen. So you can actually close up all three of those windows. We have shutters across the back and the front porch. And they really lend an element of authenticity. Well, Rick, I appreciate you coming by and checking on the progress. I just want you to see these gorgeous shutters. They do look good now. Don't they look great? They look fantastic. I am just thrilled with them. You know, we've got these solid ones uh, down here on the basement level and then the louvered ones above. Yeah, which is a traditional application. It really looks nice. And I actually brought something I wanted you to take a look at. Yeah, yeah. So I want you to feel this and tell me what you think that's made of. Gosh, it's heavy. Mahogany? No, not really. It's wow. actually a synthetic shutter. You're it, kidding. Yeah, it looks almost exactly um, like the Western Red Cedar shutters there, except it's not wood at all. It's all made out of synthetic material. So, so what would be the advantage of of having a synthetic shutter versus what we have here? Well, it's all about maintenance. Um, one of the downfalls of a wood shutter is it's gonna require ongoing maintenance and you're gonna have right. to paint it you know, at, at various intervals. Whereas a synthetic shutter, this actually has a uh, automotive grade paint finish on it, which will last about 20 years. Really? Yeah. 20 years? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, Rick, I notice on this synthetic one, there's this little metal guard here at the top, just like we have on the wood ones. Yeah, there is. One of the things we've noticed with looking at lots of old shutters over the years is the points of decay on an old shutter typically are at the joints, uh, and that's because water basically enters into the joints. So sure. What we put is a drip capping, which basically sheds the water away from the shutter, and even the synthetic shutter has a joint, so we want to protect that as well. Well, you know, we've actually taken a similar approach on the, the tops of the columns on this house uh, to keep water from getting down in, into those joints. Well, it's a, it's a good detail and it's a good practice and it's all about maintenance. Mm -hmm.